Hello, everyone, and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this 10-game MLB DFS slate on DraftKings of FanDuel. Hopefully, you tuned in yesterday. We had a great day overall. Some great calls. Home run call of the day going deep and Pete Alonzo. First one on the season. Uh, finally, if you tuned in last year, you know we're pretty good at those home run calls. We're getting on a roll here. So, one down. Let's do it again today. And we had some great calls overall on the Patreon package as well. Uh, reviewing my cheat sheet, my power rankings, everything yesterday. I had Steven Vogt with the catcher spot. He went deep. Pete Alonzo went deep. Jose Abreu went deep. Nate Lowe went deep twice. Uh, Ryan McMahon had three home runs yesterday. Um, Bo Bichette had two home runs yesterday. And then looking, that's just the power rankings. Looking at the cheat sheet, we had some even more good calls on FanDuel. Uh, Pete Alonzo, Nate Lowe. Ronald Guzman went deep as well in the first base spot. A guy that I was really high on. Um, Boba Shett, once again, two home runs on the day at the catcher spot. Steven Vogt, once again, we had Nate Lowe, Pete Alonzo, uh, Ryan McMahon with those three home runs. It's high on him. So, yeah, I felt like we did, we did pretty good overall. Lucas Giolito as the top pitcher. Um, I had him ranked ahead of Glasnow and Darvish, and he did outscore both of them. So, I uh, felt really good about yesterday's cheat sheet and power rankings over there. And the goal is to keep that going every day, day in and day out as well. So um, looking to keep things on a roll. If you are interested in my Patreon package, you can check that out. Link below in the description. You get access to all of my pitching data sheet, my hitting data sheet, bullpen data, uh, cheat sheet, power rankings. And I'm also going to be adding in a top stack section over there. I um, actually already added it in. So I've been getting a lot of feedback from people trying to learn MLB DFS, and I don't think a lot of people know that stacking is the way to go. So I'm going to be giving my top three stacks on FanDuel and DraftKings as well. Um, typically, my best piece of advice would be to be tar targeting uh, four and four stacks on FanDuel, and then on DraftKings, you can either do four and four stacks or five and then three man stacks. So if you're a Patreon of mine, you have any more questions about what that means or any of those things, feel free to reach out on. Um, on the Google Sheets that I put my tools on or message me on Patreon or message me in the Discord chat, any, any of the above. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down the slate today. Don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my home run call of the day. And we're going to go ahead and start breaking this one down. As always, pitchers first, and then we'll get into some batters. So we like to sort my sheet by K rate. It's fantasy sports. We get points for strikeouts. And the top guy in K rate today is going to be that in Shane Bieber taking on the Kansas City Royals. He has a 33.2% K rate, a 15 swing strike rate, 32.7% K rate against righties, a 33.8% K rate against lefties. So just great stuff across the board. And he gets to take on a Kansas City Royals team that does have its fair share of strikeouts in its lineup. They do not scare us at all, especially when it comes to a talent like Shane Bieber. Um, no Vegas lines out quite yet, but... I'd expect him to be a pretty heavy favorite in this one. Uh, Whit Merrifield, Ben Attendee, Carlos Santana, Salvador Perez, Jorge Soler, a bunch of strikeouts. Michael Taylor, a bunch of strikeouts. Alberto, Nicky Lopez at the bottom. Um, like I said, not exactly the best lineup in the world. And the factor in that we have the top K guy on the slate in Shane Bieber. Definitely makes a lot of sense. And he is priced up like he is a top guy for good reason. 10-6 on DraftKings. Over on FanDuel, he's priced up at 11-5. So... Um, definitely have some interest in him if you can fit him in, if we can figure out the bats that are uh, at an affordable price on both sites uh, that we'll talk about later on as we go along in the video. Second guy in the slate is Blake Snell, 32.8% carry, a 16.9 swinging strike rate, 32.1% carry rate against righties, and then a 35.8% carry rate against lefties. He does have a bit of a slugging issue against both sides. Uh, just meaning when he struggles, he does give up some hard contact. But overall, this Giants team, another good team that we could target and not feel worried about at all. And uh, overall on the slate, we're going to have some really good pitching options and some really good hitting options with such a large slate. You know, the matchups are going to finally line up and you're going to feel real confident about building some lineups. Uh, 158 favorite in this one and Austin Slater, Solano, Mike Stremski, Evan Longoria, Wilmer Flores. Um, you know, a few lefty sluggers in there, but overall we feel pretty good about the K rate in these guys. And you know, especially when you factor in Blake Snell's K rate, um, great stuff again. Trevor Bauer, third on the slate, another great option, a 29.9% K rate. Uh, overall, a 32.1% K rate against righties and then a 27.5% K rate against lefties. So we do prefer to target him against right-handed heavy lineups, if at all possible. And he gets just that taken on this Oakland Athletics team today. Uh, so he's another great option that falls at 11K on FanDuel over on DraftKings. He's at 10-2. Um, so all these guys right in that range. If I had to determine which one that I'm really looking to... Um, I mean, of course, Shane Bieber at the top. You got Trevor Bauer second, taking on the right-handed heavy Oklahoma team. Or not Oklahoma, Oakland team. And uh, definitely going to like him. So, 
Uh, once and then you, you factor in the fact that Trevor Bauer has all the run support that he does. Um, he's a great option because the Dodgers are just going to put up runs night in and night out. And um, of course, you know Trevor Bauer is going to get lots of wins because of it. So, um, but Mark Canna, Romeo Loriano, Matt Chapman, Sean Murphy, Elvis Andrews, lots of righties and lots of righties with high K rates. So, um, definitely have some interest in him. Next, we have Brandon Woodruff in Chicago, a good guy overall. Chicago does strike out a lot. The only issue that I'm seeing with Woodruff today is the weather in Wrigley is going to be not the most favorable when it comes to pitching. Uh, 74 degrees with 13 mile an hour winds blowing out to left center. So um, we'll wait for the lines to come out in this one. But we do know that the Cubbies strike out quite a bit and the Milwaukee Brewers strike out quite a bit as well in this game. I'm not really looking to target um, Kyle Hendricks, just not as good as a pitcher and his K rate's really low. So Woodruff is a guy that I'd be willing to take a chance on at tournaments. And looking at his stuff across the board, you could argue he has some of the best all around stuff. 29% K rate against 29.7% K rate overall. Against righties, it's a 30.5% K rate, and then against lefties, it's a 28.9% K rate. So, and then green across the board as far as the hard contact and stuff is concerned. So, even with the weather being the way it is, I mean, if you're not hitting bats and you're striking guys out, they can't hit the ball over the fence, of course. So, I do think that Woodruff is a reasonable option. He's priced at 7 6 on FanDuel, and over on DraftKings, he's priced down to 7 2. So, I think that he's a pretty good mid range option if you have to go there. I feel really confident in that. Jack Flaherty as well, another guy, 29.5% carry overall, 34% carry against righties, 25.2% carry against lefties. We prefer to target him in right-handed heavy matchups. And when looking at the Miami Marlins, um, as far as what they're rolling out today, let's see, we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven righties, tons of righties. So um, yeah, and then he's in Miami, which is a great pitcher's park as well. So another guy in the mid range that you feel pretty good about, Jack Clarity at seven nine, and you, you're starting to get my point very quickly about all the options we have on this slate. If you look over on DraftKings, he's priced at seven eight. So Flaherty and uh, Woodruff in the mid range, not bad options at all. And then we also have a guy in Kenta Maeda taking on the Detroit Tigers. It's 28.4% carry, a 15.3 swing strike rate, seven, second best swing strike rate on the slate behind Blake Snell. And a Detroit team that strikes out a ton, 34.4% carry against righties, 22% carry against lefties. That's the only problem with Maeda. Um, dips down a lot against lefties, similar to Jack Flaherty, the guy we were just discussing. And when looking at the Detroit lineup that they have out there today, um, there are going to be quite a few lefties in there. So, um... While the Detroit Tigers do strike out a bunch, uh, Maeda is a guy, like I said, that is pretty splits heavy when it comes to his strikeout upside. So I'm sure he's a guy that's going to be popular because he's taking on the Detroit Tigers. You might be able to fade him and get, um, you know, a little bit of ownership leverage by playing someone else that we've discussed in a better matchup with their K rate splits. Now, of course, these lefties do strike out a ton on Detroit. So I'm not telling you not to play Maeda. I'm just telling you maybe. You, Maybe one reason to fade. We're always looking for different reasons to get Contrarian. He's 8-3 over on DraftKings. Maybe a dip down to like a Jack Flaherty or a, uh, a Brandon Woodruff. As discussed, um, we got Aaron Nola. Probably the last elite guy in the slate. And to be honest with you, like going down past him, is it really necessary on this slate? I don't really know. It's something you're going to have to ask yourself. The only guy I would say is maybe a Dallas Keuchel taking on Seattle squad that we continue to target night in and night out just because of how dreadful they've been. But um, Aaron Nola taking on these New York Mets, 28.3% K rate, a 29.1% K rate against righties, and a 27.3% K rate against lefties. Good stuff across the board. He is a little bit um, bad in the hard contact category against right-handed hitting. Um, but these New York Mets are a lineup that we can target with, you know, I mean, Aaron Nola is pretty much an elite pitcher at, at this point in his career. So, um, a 158 favorite. He's to take on David Peterson. We're not worried about um, him outperforming him. So probably in line for a pretty good win. And uh, the Mets do have a fair share of strikeouts in their bats. So Aaron Nola, another candidate uh, that you could be playing. And I think that pretty much rounds out the the pitchers I'd be looking to on this slate today. Like I said, a Dallas Keuchel taking on the Seattle Mariners is an interesting option based on the matchup. But he literally has the worst K rate on the slate. Great ground ball, fly ball stuff. Bright green on the sheet for a reason. He does a great job of keeping the ball on the ground. 16.3% K rate against righties and a 26% K rate against lefties. Um, so, you know, a sinker ball thrower does a great job of keeping the ball on the ground in a matchup where there isn't going to be a K boost taken on the Seattle team we've been really liking to target. I wouldn't call you the craziest person if you want to go ahead and play him. He's 7-1 on FanDuel over here on DraftKings. He's 7-4. It's like, do we really want to play him, though, when we can play a Brandon Woodruff at 7-2? Um, those are the things you got to think about. Even the Lazardo down here at 6-3, he's taking on the Dodgers, which isn't a great matchup, but he's got good stuff. 
Uh, and I wouldn't say you're the craziest for playing him in a tournament lineup. So with the pitchers being broken out, we got to go ahead and look at the bats next. As always, I like to sort it by skill interactive ERA. Sierra gives a good uh, gives us a good idea of all of the things in a pitcher's repertoire and how good they've been overall. The factors in you know K rate, swing strike rate, hard contact, ground ball, fly ball, all of that into one stat pretty much. ERA. Um, Justin Dunn, worst on the slate by far, a 6.41 Sierra. That's not going to get the job done. Terrible across the board. 18.9% K rate, 7.9 swing strike rate. The ground ball, the fly ball is terrible. The walk rate is terrible. The hard hit rate is terrible. Um, against righties, he does do a good job of limiting the slugging and the woba. But the fly ball, the harder contact, the ground ball stuff is all still terrible. And then against lefties, he is just absolutely dreadful. So the Chicago White Sox team is going to be a good one to stack up today for sure. Um, specifically the lefties. So we got Adam Eaton. Uh, Yon Moncada, Yasmani Grandal, Leary Garcia, Billy Hamilton. Uh, and then, of course, don't let, leave out the righties in your stacks. I mean, these guys can still hit the ball great, and Dunn's just not a good pitcher all, all around, and I'm not worried about the Mariners' bullpen either. So Luis Robert, Jose Abreu, Jeremy Mercedes, Leary Garcia, Nick Magical, all up and down. Of course, we prefer to target the, the middle of the order. So Luis Robert, Jose Abreu, Yon Moncada, Yasmani Grandal, Mercedes, and Garcia. Really, the guys you're looking to really focus in on, but a 4.71 implied run total. Um, the guy's terrible, and I definitely have interest in the Chicago White Sox bats. Next on the slate, we got David Peterson for the New York Mets taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Not good stuff across the board once again. Um, the hard contact is pretty good, though. Um, that's the one thing. It's a little strange. Ground ball, fly ball, Woba's all bad, but the hard contact, he does a pretty good job of limiting. For the most part, he does have a big walk rate issue, and then if the lefties, he's very good. He's a lefty himself. But I do think that we can definitely take advantage of some of these righties that can slug lefties. Most notably, Reese Hoskins in the two hole. We got Andrew McCutcheon in the leadoff spot. Bryce Harper is a guy that's reverse splitsy, uh, meaning like he can really rake lefties surprisingly, and people don't know this. So wouldn't have an issue with you playing him. The only problem is David Peterson is very good against lefties, as mentioned. Uh, JT Real Muto, Alec Bohm, Gene Segura, Roman Quinn. I feel really good about those righties in that lineup, so have no issue with these stacking up those Phillies today. Um and J Jacob Junis, Jacob Junis taking on these Cleveland Indians. Another great guy to target. He's expected to be the opener for this one. And then they're going to transition it over to um, Hernandez out of the bullpen for Kansas City. So he is expected to take over. And as far as, you know, his capabilities, I mean, so far, you know, 6 ERA. And I'm not really worried about this um, Kansas City bullpen overall. I mean, it's when it, when you have a long reliever, it's just he's only going to be in there for like maybe three innings anyway. So um, overall, we're going to be taking on a righty and then another righty, and both aren't really talented guys. Twenty point eight percent K rate. Um, as far as the hard contact stuff, it's not good for Junis. I guess righties a four sixty two slugging, forty point eight percent hard hit rate, three twenty eight wOBA against righties. Terrible across the board against lefties. It gets a little bit better in the ground ball, the fly ball, as far as that's concerned. But the slugging is still terrible. The slugging is even worse. A 497 slugging, 42.4% hard hit rate. So I really do like targeting Jacob Junis in this one with these Cleveland Indians. There is no line released yet, but I would expect when it is released, they're going to have a pretty hefty run total. Uh, ben Gamble, Cesar Hernandez, Jose Ramirez in the middle of the lineup. Love him. Eddie Rosario in the four hole. Love him. Framel Reyes. Love him. Josh Naylor. Um, Jacob Bowers. Tons of power. And like I said, I mean, this guy doesn't strike anyone out really. Like a 20.8% carry against righties, 20.9% carry against lefties. Not too worried about him striking out um, guys to, you know, an extreme extent. Of course, these guys that strike out a ton are going to get their fair share of strikeouts. going to be swinging for the fence, but I really do like them in a stack. Um, and lots of power to go around in this Cleveland Indians lineup. So I think they're going to be a great stack to target today for sure. Um, next, we got Dallas Keuchel taking on the Seattle Mariners. I mentioned maybe playing him because he does a good job of keeping the ball on the ground, but he also does struggle as far as ERA and hard contact is turned against right-handed hitting. So you could stack up the Seattle Mariners if you're feeling brave. Overall, of course, they're not going to be in the top stacks, but in tournaments, maybe a Mitch Hanniger or Ty France, Evan White, Dylan Moore, Tom Murphy at the catcher position uh, really makes lefties, so I have no issue with you playing him. A little bit of a contrarian stack. Um, we got Kyle Gibson taking on Toronto. Toronto's a team that I really liked last night, 51.4%. The ground ball rate, 23.1% fly ball rate. Does a good job of keeping the ball on the ground. Against Rays, a 433 slugging. Against the lefties, he's very bad, a 469 slugging. Um, so definitely have some interest in both sides of the plate, but specifically the left-handed bats that can really slug in this one. 4.96 implied run total for the Blue Jays, so they are expected to put up runs. 
Kavon Vigio in the two spot, like Cam Rodatella is down low, and then the rest of the line is pretty much righties, but like I said, you can still target him. Bo Bichette, Teoscar Hernandez, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Guriel, like all these guys can hit right-handed hitting, um, so not worried about it. Of course, some of them we would prefer against lefties, but Texas bullpen, not good either, so um, definitely okay with targeting some of them. And then once we get past him, you know, pitching starts to get a little bit better on the slate overall. Um, we're not really dealing with any gas cans per se, but as always, I like to really break down the splits, figure out guys that we can target from both sides of the plate, and there are definitely some guys that we can target um, that have some splits issues. Most notably, Matthew Boyd taking on these Minnesota Twins really struggles against right-handed hitting. Does have a pretty decent K rate, 27.7% K rate, but when you look at his splits against righties, 33.5% yeah, ground ball rate, 46.2% fly ball rate, 347 low, but 38% hard hit rate, 504 slugging. Really bad, and that's going to be a problem when you're taking on some of these Minnesota Twins bats because they can rake the lefties. Most notably, we got Byron Buxton at the top. Nelson Cruz at 4K on FanDuel. I'm going to absolutely love him in this spot. The boomstick is in a great spot here, as everyone knows. Absolutely rakes lefties. Um, and, yeah, uh, I, I can't say it enough. Love Nelson Cruz today. Miguel Sano, love him. Mitch Garver, love him. Uh, we got Brent Rooker, new young kid that you could be throwing in your lineups. But that three through five in this Minnesota lineup is going to be absolutely deadly on this slate today. Nelson Cruz, Miguel Sano, and Mitch Garver. Love stacking up those twins. Um, and yeah, just hard contact issues. That's not going to pay well for you when you're going up, up against a guy like a Nelson Cruz, um, and that three spot. So can't emphasize it enough. Great payoff option today. I think he's going to be priced way up on DraftKings, 5-1 on DraftKings. And like I said, for good reason. I mean, feel confident playing the guy. As far as in the catcher spot, Mitch Garver, 4-4, no issues. Miguel Sano, 3-9, no issues with playing him. Uh, feel good about that stack. You can fit him with the pitching. That's going to be the only issue. There's a lot of elite pitching, so whether you can fit it in or not, but like those guys, we could fit in a few of these other stacks we've already discussed anyways, um, but like targeting Matthew Boyd. And then as far as, I mean, Jesus Lazardo does have some hard, ish, hard contact issues as well as his Los Angeles Dodgers team is taking him on here. They're not the greatest against left-handed pitching overall, though, surprisingly. Like for a team that's so good, Hitting-wise, I don't think people understand the Dodgers aren't really designed to hit lefties all that well. Um, AJ Pollock at the top of the lineup, I have a lot of interest in. Justin Turner at the third base score, third base position, of course, rakes lefties like him anytime he's facing a lefty. Chris Taylor. Um, Will Smith is actually better against right-handed pitching, so I'd like him better. And Mookie Betts, of course, an elite bat, but he's also better against righties. So, um, you know, not exactly getting too excited to target a pretty talented pitcher in Lazardo with a full-on stack of these Dodgers, maybe some one-off bats of those guys that we just discussed. And then as far as people that have some issues against lefties, Trevor Bauer himself, an elite pitcher, but does have some issues against lefties if you want to get contrarian. More specifically, Nathan Eovaldi up here um, on the Boston Red Sox really struggles against left-handed hitting, and he is taking on the Tampa Bay Rays today, which could be a problem for him. Uh, 487 slugging, a 40.6% hard hit rate, 335 well, but 45.1% fly ball rate against those left-handed bats and the Tampa Bay Rays have a ton of them they only have a 4.32 implied run total but you can be definitely throwing in guys in a contrarian stack like Austin Meadows Brandon Lowe uh, Joey Wendell and Testugo I mean they're not loaded up with those lefties like mentioned and they only have a 4.32 implied run total so um, just keep that in mind and that's I mean a majority of the bats we talked about the Chicago White Sox the last stack that I would mention is um, this Red Sox team taking on Ryan Yarborough. But even then, looking at his numbers, you know he's not terrible, terrible. It's just the Red Sox lineup is designed to hit left-handed pitching really well. He has a 34.5% fly ball rate, 42.2% ground ball rate, 20.2% K rate, 371 slugging. Um, like, not terrible, but when you're looking at the Red Sox lineup up and down, they have guys like Enrique Hernandez, J.D. Martinez, Sander Bogarts, um, Hunter Renfro, Christian Vasquez, and Bobby Dalbeck, all of which rake left-handed pitching. So have no issues with playing them. And that is my overall breakdown of this slate today. Before I let you guys go, i got to give you my home run call of the day. Let's get into it.
And my home run call of the day today is going to be Nelson Cruz taking on Matthew Boyd. Looking at his numbers, we had mentioned his issues against right-handed hitting, giving up a ton of hard contact, a 33.5% ground ball rate, 46.2% fly ball rate, 347 Wobo against race, 38% hard contact rate, and a 504 slugging giving up. That's going to spell issues taking on the bat of Nelson Cruz. And when looking at the repertoire that Matthew Boyd displays, on average, throwing about a 91.78 mile an hour fastball, 992 mile an hour range. Nelson Cruz has a 1,000 ISO against that pitch with a 931 Wobo over 9 batted ball events. That's absolutely absurd. That's maxed out. The slider is the next pitch that Matthew Boyd likes to go to. Nelson Cruz has a 371 Wobo against that pitch with a 462 ISO. And then when he has to change it up from that, he goes to the changeup specifically. And Nelson Cruz crushes that pitch as well. A 692 ISO, 501 Woba against lefties. We know what the boomstick's capable of. And I have a feeling he's going deep today. Love him in this matchup. Take it on Matthew Boyd. And Nelson Cruz is my home run call of the day. So there you have it, guys. Nelson Cruz, get him in your lineups. He's going deep today. And that is all for me in this one. If you did enjoy the content, if you could please give a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate that. And then don't forget to check out all of my Patreon packages linked below in the description. My KJK DFS MLB package, NBA package, get access to all the power rankings, um, all of that good stuff. I wish you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.